by blood. Not that he just says, you know, they're so ugly, I'm going to look at them through my son, because it's the only way I can look at them. No, that's not the case. He sees a perfect person in an imperfect vessel. A perfect person in an imperfect life. And because the, he, you can't, he can't add anything to what he's already done to you. It's just that your soul, or my soul, mind, emotions, and will don't yet understand it. Praise the Lord. So what does he do? He renovates our mind to truth. He heals our emotions, restores them, makes you healthy emotionally so you can enjoy the truth. So that you don't keep living in the plague of yesterday or keep living in past experiences causing you to react. You learn to respond to everything out of a new nature because that's who you really are. Um, and so when you really learn who you are, you understand... We are together and individually, corporately, collectively. You are God's masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus. And when he says you're created in Christ, that means God doesn't know you any other place than the place he created you. You, you didn't exist any other place. What you were doing here is you're sent into the earth and you come to put on this body. Hallelujah. To live out an expression that only so that he could have an expression of himself in the earth. We call that glory. Amen? Praise the Lord. I covered a little bit of that when I was here last month. But, uh, that's God living through you. God on exhibition. God's, that's glory. It's, it's not just a cloud that may come into the room sometime or a uh, manifestation of signs and wonders or whatever. The, the, all those things uh, happen, may happen tonight, and uh, I expect them every every time we come together. Yeah. Um, but regardless, the real glory is in you. Years ago, and and then if uh, the Jeff can give you a few minutes, and if you, uh, I'll have you to come up and just, I know you've been driving, they drove in what, take about three hours, two and a half, three hours? I, I got everything except for my shirt, so. I apologize for my shirt. Well, I had some nice. I got a shirt almost as nice as his. I left him every one in the car. So well, he cares. He like me. Really yeah. well, glad you're here. And appreciated the, uh, how much you contributed last night to the yeah. service. And all. What a blessing! And I've had several people today say how blessed they were by you last night. I'll have to put on Christ, I guess. So, we're glad you're here, Nick. And we certainly honor and appreciate the sacrifice, that, the, the sacrifice, or at least the, what you to be here to press in. And, uh, and, and what you that weren't here last night, he had just had a wreck on Saturday and could barely, barely even move, really. I mean, you, I don't know how you're feeling tonight, but, uh, but, uh, I think Saturday you could move barely, right? Sunday morning, uh, Sunday afternoon at one, I couldn't, I couldn't brush my teeth, couldn't scratch my nose. And then at three o'clock, it's like the Lord turned on a switch, and I took a shower, I washed my hair, I brushed my teeth, I ran through a tube and jumped over a wall. <laughs> I know it's the prayers of the saints. And the Amen. Of God. Amen. Amen. Well. This before he, he comes and leads us in some worship. Um, years ago, I just started pastoring. I, I started pastoring when I was 22 years old. And I started with 12 people. Ten of them didn't want me. So that's the number three. The two, that, the two that did were friends. Uh, I'm still friends today. Uh, but anyway, in that, that situation, and, and just before the Lord, and the Lord began to meet with us in so many awesome ways. Um, and one night, uh, there was just a, a fog that filled the building, and it was just like somebody opened the windows and this cloud rolled into the building, and the glory was so apparent, the angelic appearances, there was just, just that manifested presence like that, which we all love, and it was so awesome. Um, and uh, remember the guitar player that night. He was a professional guitar player. He started playing and he was hitting chords and notes he'd never hit before in his life. His, his hands were completely under the control of the Holy Spirit as he ministered to the Lord. 
And uh, so often the next night I was there in the service and I was praying and I was on my face before the Lord and I just and uh, I said, Lord, do that again tonight. <laughs> I said, let let us see your glory, and that's how I was describing the glory. And the, the Lord spoke to me, and He said, uh, and I was looking up like in the, the ceiling, you know, let that glory come and go. And the Lord says, look lower. Exactly. And my eyes turned down lower and landed right on the people that were there. there you go. He said, there it is. So that was, as a young pastor, he taught me early that, that the glory is in the people. Amen. You want to see glory uh, that got out. He's in you. Yes, sir. When he gets out of you, comes out of you, comes into your mind, your emotions, your will, comes into your relationships, comes into your finances, comes into your into the the environment that you're in, and fills every area, the atmosphere, the life that we live, to where you just become not somebody who just comes to church to give the glory, but you become a bearer of the glory of the Lord. You don't just use the name of Jesus. You become a bearer of the name of Jesus. Amen. You carry his mark. You have the mark of the Father in your forehead. That, that, that is, you have his very nature, his authority, and his character. That is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And so you come to bear that. In the same way, with that glory, you just you, you let God out. That's what he's saying tonight. Is, I mean, you just let me out of you. Amen. Don't, don't, don't restrain me within the bars of unbelief. Don't, don't uh, hold me back within your limitations of your past. Don't be afraid to, to let me just come out and take full control. Because he's, I talked about last night, he moves in as a dove. He just flutters in. He doesn't come quacking like a duck. He just flutters in like a dove. <laughs> Right? He just comes and just moves and nudges us on the knee. And he's always working with us. But uh, and he could he could force himself and just make it happen, but that's not you know, that wouldn't really be beneficial for you. Amen. Because that your co laborers mean your heirs together the grace of the light. And so you are a you are a participator in this and that's why he's not just gonna come and force it. Not that he can. I mean he can do anything he wants to. He's God. One thing about it, there's only two things he won't do. He won't change and he won't lie. He swore by himself because there's no greater, by an immutable hope. And ended all strife. So you know he won't change and you know he won't lie. But anything else within that, everything's subject to him. Because he, his sovereignty means I'm God and I really don't have to ask your permission. But... I'm not only God, but you're my body. Yep. And since I'm the head of the body, the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. So the feet are that last part that comes with the body that carries the weight of the body. And in fact, every nerve that affects the body is found in the feet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. So the head, as the Apostle Paul says, cannot say to the feet, I don't need you nor the eye, prophetic revelation, say to the hand, the ministry of the Spirit, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, which I think is such... Let me just say this and then we're going to worship. Uh, when it comes to apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, Jesus, Jesus is the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. Um, he just like took five loaves and two fishes, blessed them, broke them, distributed them. So he's broken and distributed himself in the body of Christ. So an apostle is one who, a real apostle, is one who is uh, has that gift of the apostle. But they themselves are not an apostle. Right. But they carry the gift of the apostle, which is Christ. He is the apostle. Are you hearing? Your, your identity is greater than an apostle. Mm -hmm. I would not lower myself to say my identity is an apostle. My identity is a son of God. Mm -hmm. That's greater than an apostle or a yes, prophet. Amen. 
or an evangelist or pastor or teacher, but for the sake of grace and function, because those ministering gifts are to, for the equipping of the body of Christ, you can take the hand, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. So if you take them that way, the apostle, the foundational ministry for governing, that doesn't mean controlling, but governing, meaning leading the way. And the, and the, the signs of an apostle are known by their all patience. Did you get that? Yes, sir. All patience. That's what the Apostle Paul said. The signs of an apostle were wrought among you, and all patience, mighty signs and wonders, and gifts of the Holy Ghost. It's for the, it's for the laying of the foundation of truth in our lives. Praise the Lord. Um, and are often the off-scouring and those who are not seen. But I, I guess too many things going on. I keep moving. Then the prophet, that which points the way. Then the evangelist, the longest finger for gathering. The gifting of the evangelist, healings, miracles, um, for gathering. Then the pastor, the ring finger, covenant, guarding, shepherding, feeding, watching over the flock, the gift, praise God. And then the teacher for grounding. The apostle can touch all of them. Apostle may be a prophet, may at times be an evangelist, may be at times a pastor, maybe at times a teacher. Are you hearing me? They're, a, they're an apostle. Uh, then the, the prophet and the apostle work real close. One establishes foundation in the Word, the other in the Spirit. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. And so this, the purpose of these gifts is to work themselves out of the job. To get themselves <laughs> in the place where the people don't need them anymore. I know I'm truly successful when I'm not needed by the ones that I minister to. That's right. When they are doing the work of the ministry. Not that I'm not loved. You understand? Not that I not, don't have fellowship or relationship. Meaning that they now are doing the very same thing. Very good. Praise the Lord. And that's the, that's the work of the apostle. And that's how you know you... That's how you can rejoice. That's how you sit back and say, Praise God. They're doing. Yeah. They're doing. They're healing the sick. They're prophesying. They're flowing. They're doing it greater than I ever did it. They have a greater flow of God in their life than I did. Amen. And that's great joy. Because that's the aim. Praise the Lord, brother. You ready? Go ahead and lead us in some worship. If you will. Thank you, Lord. Let's just, just, uh, just enter in and then we'll come back in a few minutes and we'll continue to love. I'd like to encourage the body here to, to really desire to hear his voice, desire him, desire him, and to pull more of him out. Yes. A lot of times we come to see and hear what's going to go on, and, and we can judge a service, well, oh, it's going to be a good service, or, you know, and, and you don't want to do that. You want to let the... You want to let the woman be silent. That's the soul realm. And the analyzing. And you want to just open up your spirit. And you want to desire him. Because God fills the hungry and the longing soul. And if you've come to hear a man or see what kind of man of God, that it'll be on a certain level. But if you if you've come hungry for him, if you if you don't care, I just want to just take these two more minutes. Man of God is the 
set a tone to, until I know that I'm, we're ready. To go. speaks to the troubled sea. It's the old song that you calm the troubled waters of your heart. Gospel to you. He does that very thing. Everything's fine. Praise God. All is well. Thank you so much, brother. God bless you. Appreciate pure worship. may or may not realize it. True praise uh, such as Judah meaning praise or the house of praise. He was born in the midst of strife and contention. He was born to Jacob which means he'll catch your con man trickster manipulator. And Leah in that day and amen the wanderer or excuse me weary tired. And uh, the point of all of that is, is that true praise is born in the heart of the person who gets tired and weary of the conduct. They get tired and weary of all the other stuff and just say, Lord, I just want you. I'm going to worship you. This is the time he lifts himself up. Um, I do want to, this is personal ministry in a few minutes, but before we do, I'm going to teach just a little bit. And uh, what I I'm going to do something a little different tonight, but I'm going to maybe like three people, and if there's something in your heart that you want me to, you'd like to hear me teach about, and we'll just flow that way, because what the Lord instructed me about tonight, and is uh, just flow, pour out what I put in you, and it'll flow. Last night I knew I needed to bring home that message of rest. Tonight, just right out of, right out of the interval speak. So, uh, when do you have anything you'd like to hear taught on? No, I'm just going to... No. All right. Um, 
and how you're thinking. Is you? Oh, Have okay. you taken a tithe? No, Catholic priesthood. Okay. And the gently service tonight? And the glory. Glory. All right. And then. Manifest presence. So we we'll tie those together there. And the uh, stand, do you have anything specific you'd like to your minister now? You know, God. On the kingdom. On the kingdom. All right, so I'm going to do that real quick. <laughs> if we don't get to tonight, then we can before the, uh, before the uh, Thursday night. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. On the, the white horse and what it mean, what it means in the book of Revelation. White, I'll just put that up real quick. White is a symbol. The book of Revelation is a highly symbolical book. That, and it's, it's like a dream. You're trying to interpret a dream and you can have several different people that's going to look at it differently. It's not really a book of eschatology. Eschatology is a theological term for end time events. Uh, eschatology is when we don't know uh, how to apply something into the now, we put it off into the future. That's how it was. We get it, you know, every once in a while we have to reach into our eschatology bag and say, you know, this, there's something here for today. Uh, but anyway, the book of Revelation is a very highly symbolical book. It's a, uh, the, the word revelation is a, also a word translated in Romans 8 19 as manifestation. So the book could have just as easily been called the book of the manifestation of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, it's not the book of the manifestation of the Antichrist, the false prophet, and the end of the world. Never said that. It's the book of the manifestation or uncovering our apocalypses of Jesus Christ. The word apocalypse is where we get our English word apocalypse from. Apocalypse has nothing to do with end time. has nothing to do with the end of the world. In Hollywood it does. But uh, for you and I, and scripturally speaking, it does. And it just means an unveiling or an uncovering of the person of Jesus Christ. So that's what the book's about. It's about the uncovering of Jesus Christ. And any time you uncover Jesus Christ, you're also able to see what's well, not him. Praise the Lord. So uh, and it's, it's a book that, that continues to show the pattern of he which is, was, and is to come. That you take all of that. Um, the, the real focus of the book is the Lamb. 21 times the Lamb is found in the book of Revelation. Uh, he is the reigning Lamb. Uh, the Lion starts in, in Revelation chapter 5, where he said, uh, and he said that, you know, who has prevailed to open the book? The Lion of the tribe of Judah. Well, he did prevail as the Lion. But then he said, I looked to see, and there wasn't a lion, there was a lamb. <laughs> so the lion began to disappear, and the lamb begins to appear. And he said, there stood a lamb as though it had been slain. So you have a lamb standing, and i this, I got to move on here. I'll just be preaching this part. Uh-huh. The, the lamb standing, and the lamb slain. So here's a lamb who was slain in his death, but still standing in resurrection power. Praise the Lord. Right. And so the, now you have the unfolding of that lamb throughout the whole book. Mm-hmm. It's not, and you get the marriage supper of the lamb. Never was a marriage supper of the wife or the bride. It's a marriage supper of the lamb. It's the light of the lamb. It's the lamb prevailing. Yeah. Praise the Lord. It's the, it's, the, it's the life of the lamb. It's the book of the life of the lamb. It keeps going on. So praise the Lord. And he's that lamb. He's not a barnyard animal as we know. So as you see the symbolism, you can't just pick out symbolism and think this fits. So if the lamb is really a literal lamb, then we'd say, well, this whole book of Revelation is a very literal book. But if it's not, if the lamb is a symbol, and we can know how the symbolism goes because behold the lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world, right? Uh, the, he provided a lamb for a house in the book of Exodus. So Jesus is the fulfillment of that lamb, so we understand that. And not only is he fulfillment of that lamb, but that lamb is, you, is, is, is in you. Say it this way. You can't have Jesus in the book without having you there. Because he's the head, but we are the body. 
and the head and the body are one. So anytime he's speaking of him, it's also speaking of you as the body of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So you can't have the head and say, well, we'll take the head, but we don't want nothing to do with the body. No, the body and the head are one. Mm -hmm. The head directs the body. Everything that the body does comes through the head. Praise the Lord. It, without the head sending a signal to the finger to move, the finger doesn't move. It first comes through here. So that's the same way with the body of Christ. Now back now the white horse. Well, the white speaks of righteousness. It speaks of purity. The purity of righteousness. The horse is a symbol of strength. The symbol, a symbol of power. Um, for, and you, again, you interpret scripture with scripture. So in the book of... Uh, of uh, Zechariah talks about a goodly horse, a horse that he rides. I, I, years ago, I preached a, uh, about the ministry of the horse, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, found in the book of Job, there's ministry of the horse, ministry of the peacock, the peacock ministries, rhino ministries, and so that's a whole different message. But I preached it years, but uh, but very interesting. But the point of that is, is here he comes reigning. Reigning in righteousness, reigning in purity, reigning in strength and power, and none can resist him. It's Jesus Christ revealed. And it's not just the white horse that will come out of the eastern sky, but the white horse of purity and strength that appears within us, putting down every enemy. And here's something you find all through the book of Revelation, and that is worship. Mm -hmm. The book is a book of praise. All Amen. through the book. And and uh, and so the uh, the white horse speaks of the purity, the righteousness in a nutshell. There's a whole lot more there. Praise God. Mm -hmm. um, the, Melchiz good. the Melchizedek priesthood. Of course, Abraham met Melchizedek, uh, and uh, Melchizedek was the king of Salem. Salem is the old ancient name for Jerusalem. Salem means peace. A Jeru means foundation. Salem means peace. So uh, the foundation of peace became Jerusalem. Uh, the uh, Melchizedek, king of priests, king of righteousness. And he, to you and I today, uh, well, let me back up a little bit. It, when Abraham met him, uh, Abraham blessed him, gave him tithe of all. Um, the uh, Melchizedek blessed him, excuse me. And then this speaks to us of a priesthood found in Hebrews chapter 7, which is a replacement of the old Aaronic priesthood where Aaron and his uh, sons, you know, was under the Levitical priesthood, showing that the priesthood had changed. And now Hebrews chapter 7 declares that there's another order of Melchizedek. Yes, sir. It's not the old law. But it's now righteousness and peace have kissed each other in a king priest ministry. And by king, and this is Melchizedek, if you speak of Melchizedek, you've got to speak of the king priest ministry. It's not whether was he a literal man or is this a Christophany, meaning the appearance of Christ. People have argued about that for years. Some say he was a, a literal man from the uh, lineage of Seth. Others say he was actually a Christophany in appearance of Christ. The point of it is, and I don't really care about whether he was or whether he wasn't, because that's not the main focus of Scripture. The main focus of Scripture is we have another order. The old order of the law, the commandments, the old priesthood, the old way of doing things has passed. And we have a new priesthood now. And we find this beginning in Jesus Christ, which is made after the order of Melchizedek, who, as a king priest, as a king, he could take hold of God. Omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient, hallelujah, God, who cannot lie and cannot change, take hold of him fully. And then as a priest, he could take hold of man. Man in their sufferings, man in their frailty, man in their cries, man in their need, and that he could easily be touched with the feelings of their weaknesses, and now as a king and a priest, he could bring the two together. 
Hallelujah. As the God man. Bring, bring forth God and man. And this is the revelation of Jesus Christ in mankind. That's what the king priest ministry speaks of. So here's the righteousness, and now he brings it together with peace. And righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Hallelujah. And and uh, that's the, that's what the Melchizedek priest said in a very small nutshell. Because if we were really going to teach it, we'd have to lay it out in Scripture and teach it verse by verse and, and bring it all together. But, but when you when you think of that, you think of the order after the days, which was the order of an endless life. So there's no end of this. Hallelujah. And it has no beginning of days nor end of life because it's it, because it uh, goes beyond time. Hallelujah. It's spirit life, not earthly life. Are you hearing me? But it brings man together in the spirit life. It brings God together in earthly life, bringing the two together wow. as perfect harmony. Hallelujah. No beginning of days nor end of life, but made after the order of Melchizedek. Can we shout now? Or Go ahead. Glory yeah. yeah. to the Lamb. That's, that's something to shout about. Hallelujah. Whoa. Praise the Lord. So, uh, uh, here what was, was manifest presence, manifest and, glory. presence and glory and the kingdom. So let me cover his first. Oh cover your kid together. On the kingdom, uh, the the kingdom is eternal, always has been, because the king is eternal. The kingdom is the out. Uh, the kingdom is the thoughts. The the. Uh, influence, the rule, the dominion, the authority, the very um, makeup of what the king is. It's the outworkings of who he is. He's king. So if you have a king, you've got to have a kingdom. And if you've got a kingdom, you've got to have a king. So every kingdom has to have five ingredients. It must have a king. It must have a territory. It must have citizens. It must have uh, principles or or spiritual laws that govern the citizens and thank God for the laws that he gave us and uh, and let's cover that real quickly and then you have to have a glory and a lifestyle that follows the citizens or the subjects now uh, the kingdom has always been God's passion and God's heart Uh, in the New Testament alone the word kingdom is found 160 times kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God are one and the same Matthew used the terminology kingdom of heaven because he was writing to Jewish converts who associated heaven with the throne. So he used the terminology kingdom of heaven. But Mark, Luke, and John used the terminology kingdom of God speaking of the same kingdom. Right. He's also called the kingdom uh, of the saints. It's called the kingdom of of his dear son, the son of his love. It's the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God, it's one kingdom. Praise the Lord. Amen. You don't die someday so to get into the kingdom because the kingdom is not just heaven. Jesus said in his day, in, in Luke 17, he said, he said uh, to them, he said, the, uh, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Or it doesn't come with the observances of man. It doesn't come with all your ceremonies and all the things that you're doing. It doesn't come that way. But the kingdom, uh, now he said, and uh, the uh, King James actually mistranslated it. It's the kingdom is among you. Now, because he was, what he was telling them, because it was among them then, he was the personification of the kingdom. John the Baptist came preaching the kingdom. Jesus personified it. He showed him the kingdom. He said, if I with the finger of God cast out spirits, then the kingdom has come to you. Sir. Again, 160 times in the New Testament, he speaks of kingdom. He speaks of being born again twice. And when he speaks of being born the first time in John chapter 3, he speaks about being born so you can see the kingdom. Because right. unless you're born of the Spirit, you can't see the kingdom. And then you're being born again, not of corruptible word, but of the incorruptible word, which is alive forever. So just... There's a whole lot here. So let me real quickly. The, the, the kingdom, Jesus is the king of the kingdom, obviously, right? Praise the Lord. He's not going to get a kingdom someday. He's not, going to, he's not a soon-coming king. Never has been. 
He is a king who's continually coming. In fact, one of the words for coming it means he's the ever coming one in the Greek. There's seven different words for the word coming. He is the he is the ever coming one. So the kingdom is continually being uh, made manifest. Uh, he says his name is the Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and of the increase, increase. You got an increase of his kingdom. There sh- and peace. There shall be no end. And then uh, Daniel said, I saw uh, in interpreting the. the vision of Nebuchadnezzar who saw a head of gold, arms of silver, belly of brass, feet and legs of iron and clay and he said I saw a rock cut out of the mountain without the help of man's hands. Yes. Amen. Man didn't do this. Man didn't figure this out. It's not another doctrine. It's not a new message. Are you hearing me? It's a life. It's the life of the king and the kingdom now is not just among you but in you. That's right. Praise Amen. the Lord. Because Christ in you is the hope of glory. Christ in you manifests the kingdom. The kingdom is in the Holy Spirit. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Christ in you produces uh, the kingdom. Christ in you is the king. He's the prophet. He's the priest. The king produces joy. The prophet produces righteousness. The priest produces peace. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Uh, The whole lot uh, here. The kingdom, Christ produces the kingdom. Uh, something else just about the, about the kingdom because in the under the old covenant they sought the kingdom because the kingdom had not yet came in full manifestation except Jesus now was carrying the kingdom. So under the new covenant you don't seek the kingdom. You see the kingdom. You only seek what you don't see. That's why after Matthew 6.33 when he said seek first the kingdom of God is righteousness all these things should be added to you. You never hear that terminology again. Man was never again instructed to seek the kingdom. But they were told to see the kingdom, enter into the kingdom, and bear the fruit of the kingdom. Yeah, it's true. Wow. Glory. So when you see the kingdom, that means that you, you don't get into the kingdom by dying someday physically. You're, you're born into the kingdom. You're in the kingdom now. And in the kingdom, there is... There is no enemies. All is at rest. Right. In the kingdom is perfect peace. In the kingdom is perfect rest. In the kingdom is perfect joy. In the kingdom there is no such thing as needs. Amen. So when the in- increase of his kingdom happens, because this rock that crushed the image, it filled the whole earth. Yeah. And so the kingdom is filling all of your earth. The kingdom's coming into every area of your life. It's coming into our relationships. It's coming into our body. It's coming into our into our walk among men. But what we've done is we've we've been so uh, church minded. The purpose of the church, the reason God created the church, is to be an instrument of the kingdom. But what the church did, let me back up. Jesus said, <laughs> "Yeah, it's about the kingdom, you." <laughs> The last two years of the Apostle Paul's life, he received everybody who came to him, he had one message for them, the kingdom. Yeah. So when you ask about the kingdom, it's, there's so much here. Um, but when you begin to speak about uh, th- this kingdom and the seeing of it, the, the vision of it, the, uh, the life of it, you begin to understand that I am actually in the kingdom. I'm a citizen of the kingdom. There is no need in the kingdom. And Jesus said in Matthew 16, He said concerning, uh, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Most of us are familiar with that. Uh, And then He said, But I give to you the keys of the kingdom. Now after He said that, what uh, we've, we've done is we said, No, Lord. I'm going to give you back the keys of the kingdom. <laughs> and we will build the church. <laughs> and so we'll glorify ourselves as the church. Missing our purpose because we thought the purpose was of the, of the church is just win the world. We don't be salt and light in the church, so we're going to win the world. He never told us to save the world. He told us to see the world. Because the it, what do you seed it with? Kingdom seed. Yeah. You keep planting kingdom seed, kingdom harvest is going to come. 
But we wanted to get them into our church instead of getting the church into the world. We've been trying to get the world into the church. Very good. And so we gave him the keys of the kingdom and said, now if anything's wrong, it's your fault, not ours. So why don't you fix the Lord? How come you haven't answered my prayer? How come you didn't fix this thing? How come you didn't move? He said, because I gave you the keys of the kingdom. That's right. You don't like the way things are in Knoxville. Fix it. Yes, sir. And start by planting the right kind of seed into your city. Plant seed into your neighborhood. Plant seed into your family. That's kingdom seed. Because kingdom seed is going to bring forth kingdom fruit. And kingdom fruit don't know any need. Praise God. Thank you. <laughs> That's the glory and the lifestyle of it. Amen. Glory to God. So, which follows that. The glory, the, the glory that follows that. Because now over 400 times in the scripture, the word glory is found there. Glory, now I'll start with this and we'll come over to the manifested part of it. The, the glory um, is that's the passion of the kingdom. And uh, Psalms 145 says, All thy saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom. And they shall talk of thy power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. For his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion endures throughout all generations. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, amen. So he said we're going to bless him by talking about the glory of the kingdom. And when we do that, we're going to make known to people everywhere his mighty acts. Very good. And make known the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Mm. So the, the glory was manifested in certain ways under the old covenant, uh, such as a pillar of fire and a cloud, because again the glory was not in us because the kingdom had come in us. It was on the outside. The anointing was poured from without. Now the anointing abideth within you. Amen. Praise God. And so he's in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. It's the mystery that was hid from generations past. But let me back up. Christ in you, the hope or the expectation of glory. The expectation of glory is Christ in you. Now, glory, as I said, it was had all of these different manifestations where he said, I'll create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion a cloud by day and pillar of fire by night. Um, when you get into the, uh, under the new covenant, now glory is within you. Glory, when it first comes into our life, comes in in a very initial way because God is in us. We don't know what happened to us. We should know greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. At least that's what I read in 1 John 4 and 4. I may not feel it all the time, but I know God's still in me. Glory is in me. God, God, think about that. God living in you. Yeah. Thank you. Nothing impossible. You don't have to try to believe. You're already a believer. Amen. Only a person who doubts they're a believer would dare to try to believe. That's right. So you, it comes an initial glory, God living in you. Well, it's not long till we begin to, because of an unrenewed mind, damaged emotions, Come on. and a will that is subjected to all kinds of pressures of life. We begin to look to other places, religious places. Like I said earlier, you know, we come to the Lord, we're, we're happy, we're free, we got glory in us, God's blessing, finally something's begin to change in my life, now it's a new day, a new, a new living way, walk in it, and it's not long till, alright, well you need to study more, you need to read more, yeah. you need to pray more, you need to pray eight hours a day, you need to do this, you need to do that, you're not, you're not quite living right, you're still under generational curse, you're doing this, you're doing that, and it's now that, that glory that was initial is faded, and you can't even find it, because now it's been veiled by religion. Yeah. It's veiled by, but it's still there, but it's just been veiled. You can't partake of it or see it, because all of these religious things have come to replace us, and what religion does is magnifies your ugliness yeah. at the expense of the beauty or glory yeah. of Christ. Yeah. 
Religion, uh, as we said this before, is sin conscious, fear motivated, performance based. Sin conscious, it makes you more aware of your sin than you do of his righteousness. Makes you more aware of your weakness than his strength. More aware of, of all the things you've done wrong than what he did right. But what he did right is much greater than anything you could have ever done wrong. That's why he was sin. We've, we've had greater trust in our failure than we did his success. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, glory. Praise the Lord. We knew He heard us when we cussed out our neighbor, but we didn't know He heard us when we really prayed. (laughs) (laughs) So that's sin conscious. Uh, Back to this. So this glory is in us, and this glory that God placed in us, it's, it's there, so it's not long until he, begins, he sees something, so he keeps working in our life, destroying those things, removing that veil, and it's God at work in you, and he's after something in you. He's not after just making you happy. He's not after just to pay your car payment for the month. Oh, he'll do all that to help you get through another experience. But what he's really after is what he put in you. He's wanting you to discover and I to discover the glory that he put within us. It's Christ in you. So Christ in you gets imprisoned within our emotions. And he gets imprisoned within us. And all the time, he's the expectation of the glory. And, and that's, why, that's why praise is so important. Because the very word praise, doxa, is also the word used for glory under the New Testament. So, it, so praise begins to unlock God. Let God out of you. Hallelujah. It's not that he's just coming down upon us. Uh, but praise starts opening you up and say, hallelujah, hallelujah. And glory starts coming. So God, God is found in glory. The book of Habakkuk, the, the prophet Habakkuk, where he was saying, you know, why are you not doing anything about our problem? Why are you allowing the Chaldeans to rule over us? And then he said, uh, the Lord spoke to him the way he does to us. Write the vision, make it plain that he may run as reads it. The vision's yet for an appointed time, but would carry away freedom to surely come. And then he goes on a little bit further, and he says, that when the earth was filled with praise, the heavens got filled with glory. Now hear that. When the earth, when this earth gets filled with praise, yeah. this earth gets filled with praise, these heavens get filled yes, with glory. Sir. Yes, sir. When a family gets filled with praise, a family gets filled with glory. When a church gets filled with praise, a church gets filled with glory. When, it, when Knoxville gets filled with praise, Knoxville gets filled with glory. Mm-hmm. Because God is ready to come out of you. Mm-hmm. And what He's looking for in you is not just all the other stuff. He's looking for Himself in you. God is looking for God in you. Yeah. God's wanting Himself and to pull out of you. He don't want anything from you He hasn't put there. Amen. We just keep offering Him all these other things. <laughs> we bring that. How about that, Lord? Surely you'll be pleased today. Let's make it simple. I just want what I put in you. And he keeps working for that one thing. He wants glory. Yes, sir. That whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. That we may be to the praise of his glory. And so that initial glory becomes now, you know, it, it kind of perpetual. It just comes sometimes in it, and then it, it, it goes, and it's, it's fleeting, and we, we walk in the glory for a while, and then we don't know what happened to us, and, and, and then it goes a little bit more. But there is a glory that remains. Yeah. You go from glory, from the glory of Moses that faded, to the glory that remains in Christ. From glory to glory. Hallelujah, so much in, in that teaching on glory. But to the uh, glory involves relationships. Say that real quickly. He is the God of glory. And then the God of glory is also known as the Father of glory. Now the very term Father necessitates offspring, so He is also the Lord or Son of glory. Very good. And then you have the Spirit and the glory of God that rest yes. upon us. Yes, sir. So the Godhead finds his union all in glory because in glory there can never be two. It's only one in glory. Wow. The moment you come into glory, 
He brings many sons in the glory, but only one son is found there. And you are, are part of that many member son. One new man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, many sons there, but there's only one man. And head and body. Wow. Praise God. Now you get into the practical part of the manifested presence. Where the glory comes out of you and comes upon you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise God. And it becomes, it's often called tangible presence. Mm -hmm. uh, tangible means perceptible to touch. And this is caused, uh, this has to do with signs and wonders. It's when God, who is spiritual, invades the earthly realm. And a lot of times it is a sign or a wonder. It's to, uh, a wonder makes you stand back in amazement, stops you in your tracks so you'll look in a different direction. Mm -hmm. A sign points you in a direction. Yes, sir. So a sign and a wonder. Signs and wonders are part of the gospel. You don't really... You have, if you didn't see signs and wonders, you didn't really hear the gospel fully. You heard portions of the gospel. But the gospel fully preached always demands signs and wonders. Yeah. Uh, signs and wonders... Uh, there's so much glory in you that it... it Manifest means it, it comes out of you. It comes into the open realm. That which is already existent now has a visible reality. Um, there's, there's a lot in this teaching as well, but one thing is, is you can... Uh, when it comes to, say, being overcome by the glory, what we would call being slain the Spirit or falling out of the power, because sometimes that's how, what we equate with manifested presence on a very low level. And, uh, you know, I've had people who've, who fell out and, you know, in glorious manifestation got up the same way they fell down. Yeah. Nothing really changed in them. And I've had the opposite. Um, I mean, there was a time I went through for about a year where I couldn't even hardly stand behind the pulpit. I'd get a pulpit and I'd have to hold on because I didn't know when I would be gone. Right. And so I lived that way, and uh, and so and I've I've seen in in services that I've ministered, and I've seen hundreds of people out of the power at one time. So you know this is not anything new new to me. I've I've seen people who said I'll never go down, yeah. go out. You know? So uh, I'd say you know, I wonder what's wrong with me because I've never fallen out. Well, that's, none of that's a sign of spirituality. Right. It is, a, it is a sign of the manifested presence for a specific purpose. Yes. Now, I went to one church where they'd been falling out. I mean, they fell out all the time. And I just told them that week I was going to be there for a week and said, listen, nobody's going to fall out this week. <laughs> and because you need to be taught. Right. You're falling out instead of being taught. <laughs> and so falling out is not spiritual. It's, the, it's when the tangible presence of God becomes comes in contact with the physical realm, yes, the physical realm uh, gives in. Yes, sir. In not all cases, because sometimes God don't want you on the floor. That's right. <laughs> Amen. We, we try to make things happen because it's a sign of more spirituality. So people, and you have to understand, any truth people make a religion, but don't never let anything, manifestation, any, tr any word or belief that you gain steal your joy, Yes, sir. Are you hearing me? Move you from rest or cause you to cease and worship. Come on. Amen. We like it. It should bring you greater place to Jesus, greater place of worship. And it's not it's, uh, it's not even seeing angels. Uh, tell folks, you know, because we get all spiritual, because it's really unbelief. We, you know, God, let, let's see an angel. Because we're trying to get God to appear to our senses. Hmm. But Think about this. Balaam's donkey seen an angel. There you go. It's not a sign of spirituality. If a donkey can see an angel, okay. You come to see him by the spirit first. Then all these things that you know, and I've seen angels. Angels could appear in the service tonight. I don't know. I've seen all kinds of things. I was preaching one night and I was completely covered with gold. I didn't even know it. 
Amen. I was wondering why they weren't listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? And the, the pastor got up afterwards and he said, that, he said, uh, Scott, you don't know what was happening. I said, you're completely covered with gold. Everybody, you all seen it, right? And they, they saw it. I didn't know even what was happening. <laughs> so, and you know, there's times where jewels were found in the service. This happened even recently. Uh, or uh, all kinds of things that happen. But they happen, you know. Oh, it, it, it's, praise God, you know. It Amen. shouldn't move us that much. We shouldn't be so accustomed yeah. to that realm. Yeah. You know, if, if you see people who could put their finger in a light socket <laughs> and it really not bother them, right. <laughs> it's because they got used to it. It's a little by little. I know people like that. Yeah. And you got other people yeah. that are shaking. They touch your light socket. So everybody has different manifestations. <laughs> but glory is so much in you. Yeah. Whenever they came to take Jesus away to crucify him, they said, Are you Jesus of Nazareth? He said, I am. Um, 600 men went backwards. Yes, sir. The, uh, I've seen people fall out that every way you can imagine, lifted up, thrown across the room. <laughs> I've seen them, and you can believe this or not, but somebody standing right in front of a, a wooden bench or pew, standing right like this, and all of a sudden the power of God hit them and they landed right underneath it. No possible way. Unexplainable. So it's, but here's the key. Whenever you want to manifest the presence, you can have it on a regular basis, but you get a function because he comes as oil, wine, fire, I was saying last night, dove, and a lot of times we're saying, Lord, keep the wine flowing. Keep the wine flowing. He says, let's have some fire here. <laughs> because he's the one who he's the one who controls the world, you know. Because we like one at one part so much, we don't want to switch it. <laughs> and yet the north wind may start blowing. We're crying, Lord, give us some south wind. But you learn to acknowledge God in every place and love Him in every place. And when you don't feel His manifested presence, He's not any less there than He was. When you felt all the good yeah. spots and all yeah. that. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, two things expect and respect. You expect it. Now, I can, because this, and we all can, but I just want to say it this way. I know personally for me, at any given time, any time, day, doesn't matter when, I can yeah. lift my hands and say, Holy Spirit. And immediately he begins to fill me, just like right now. And then fire can get in the hands. There's certain times that I, my hand will get real heavy uh, or like burning. Those are just those are spiritual gifts and symbolisms, and, and uh, it's not a sign of not a sign of maturity. It's a sign of his, 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 his. his. Manifested presence. Doesn't mean I'm any more than somebody else. It just means that I have a portion as you have a portion. And we allow a portion of God to flow with one another. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So that's again in a nutshell. Stop there. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit. You alone are holy. You alone are worthy. Only you alone deserve my praise. So I come before you to worship and adore you. No 
So wakes on me, O oh Lord. prophetic, it comes in different ways and sometimes it comes in vision form and sometimes it comes like last night <clears throat> and I probably in vision form because I'm just right at this very moment nobody's standing out to you know, the spirit to minister to but that'll change probably in a minute so I just want to just keep availing yourself to it you know he's he just switches, shifts, shifts the flow. The flow shifts and it's flowing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want
just love him. Sister right here is a Mary. I, I see the intercessor in you.